what's going on guys welcome back to the channel and now i know i'm a little late to this i actually been out of town and i'm just getting back in getting everything situated and i know i missed the xbox event that just happened i think this past sunday and i just wanted to pretty much give my thoughts on it now i'm not gonna go over everything that happened at the event because they dropped so so many games at this event so i'm just gonna kind of go over more of the highlights and my thoughts on it and is this a win that everyone keeps talking about it is so anyway make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you already haven't and like the video as well that helps out so much all right so the thing is i've seen so many videos that were posted online about this is a w this is a win you know everyone was you know cheering xbox and in reality i think that this was a big win for microsoft um, when it comes to the lineup that they showed and i think it was a really good lineup the thing is i don't know how much of a win and a w this is now after the event is over and all the you know excitement has kind of died down a little bit i'm really looking at this event with some more you know fresh eyes and wondering how good this event actually was and there was a few things that i noticed which we're going to jump into right away now first off here's the thing they opened the event with call of duty and a lot of people love call of duty and the thing is this is the call of duty that is being made by treyarch and people are pretty excited for that that's really really great it's the new black ops 6 realistically it looks great it looks fun and the best part is it's coming to game pass and on top of that you know it's going to be the same across all platforms since xbox you know now owns the call of duty franchise they are sticking to what they said and it's going to be the same on xbox playstation or pc it's all the same call of duty the nice thing is if you do have game pass and you get it in game pass day one you can go ahead and spend the extra like thirty dollars and get the vault edition the vault edition is usually like a hundred bucks or something crazy like that but now you can go ahead and get it for like just thirty dollars which that's a little bit more appealing for a lot of people especially people like me now after that they showed a game like doom um the doom dark ages game that comes out now never really played doom don't know a whole lot about what's going on with doom but i know a lot of people love doom especially the past two doom games that came out well this one dark ages is a prequel it's kind of like a medieval type of style game which it does look pretty cool and graphically it looks really great and i know phil spencer is a huge doom fan i remember like a few years back he said oh he just he's seen what the stuff the guys were doing at id and he was really excited for it and to finally start seeing what he was talking about is actually interesting now the thing about this game is for those people that are fans of doom we know that it's coming out in 2025 but we don't actually have a release date yet so that kind of sucks and that's kind of going to be a reoccurring factor with a lot of games a lot of games i personally was excited for about myself there's not really any release dates for them you know maybe you get a year or you get nothing at all and that like i said is a common theme throughout a lot of the games at this event now also they showed the new diablo i think expansion um personally i didn't really care about that i, I me myself i'm not really a big diablo fan but you know for the people that are really into diablo you do have that expansion now on the flip side you have path of exile is coming out that people probably are more going to lean to later on this year but i do know diablo 4 is doing really well on game pass so there may be more people that are actually more interested in this expansion but i do know that diablo has a bunch of different issues i don't remember if they gave an exact release date for that but that is there on top of that you know microsoft was really leaning to the fact they own activision blizzard now for the first time ever they showed a world of warcraft at an xbox event and it was the world of warcraft expansion and it comes out later this year I don't play WoW, so again, you know, for people that do play WoW, that's awesome. I don't really play it, so I really didn't care a whole lot about that, but I think it comes out around, like, August, so sometime between August and October. Unfortunately, I don't remember because I personally didn't care about that, but, you know, for people that are into that, you have that option. Now, the thing that I am really more excited for is that they showed a little bit more of Avowed and more of Indiana Jones, and they did a little bit of, I guess you can say, deep dives a few months back, so you didn't really get to get a huge one this time. It was more like CGI trails and a little bit of gameplay, but they both still look really, really fun. Unfortunately, for both of those games, we still don't have a release date. We do know it's coming this year, so it was kind of, you know, their way of saying, hey, it's coming this year, but we don't actually have a date this year so you know maybe around holiday season but we don't know exactly when those games are coming out but ultimately they still look really good now a game that i was actually pretty surprised to see i didn't know what it was at first is the new perfect dark game i'm actually really excited for it i actually kind of like it maybe so much nostalgia for the previous games especially the first one giving you a very old 007 type of vibe when it comes to that multiplayer concept but this perfect dark game that's coming out it really took me by surprise because I kind of forgot that Microsoft was even working on it. And when she took the helmet off, unfortunately, 
Microsoft westernizes the game and she doesn't look anything like her previous two different versions of the game. The, the game itself looks really, really good and the gameplay looks really phenomenal. Like, just looking at it, if this game is what they advertise, this could potentially take FPS games to another level because the fluidity of how she was just moving when she was taking down different people looked really good. Now, when the game actually launches, do you get that? Whether it's like QT things, I don't know but hopefully it's more like a quick free flow type of thing. And if that is the case, I'll be even more excited for this game. The thing about this game is, like I've been saying, there's been no release date. We don't even get a year for this game. It's just like, hey guys, don't listen to the rumors. We're working on this game still. And that was pretty much it. One of the games I was really like excited to see at the event, again, had no type of release date on it. They show a trailer for the new Fable game and you know, if you're a fan of Fable, that is awesome to see. I actually do like Fable. I didn't really beat all of them. Um, I know there's three of them from before. I didn't really beat all of them, but the the universe of Fable is just very interesting to me and in, uh, in the things that you can do in the game. Now, again, like with Perfect Dark, you know, they did a little bit. It looks like they did a little bit of fixing on the main protagonist, her face. It looks a little, you know, better than it has been looking, but it's still, still a little rough. But regardless of that, the game looks very beautiful it looks very pretty and that's a good selling point it, you know the facial animations and all that look phenomenal and i don't expect a whole lot less from the playground team from the guys who do like the the forza games i'm a little still concerned because i'm like wait you guys do driving games and now you're making a rpg so i'm a little confused and, and curious why microsoft picked that studio to do it i mean you know their games are gonna look great but i hope they play you know, gameplay wise, great. And the thing that I have a problem with this trailer is we have yet to actually see, I know they said, oh, this is a gameplay trailer, or they've been alluding to that as gameplay trailer or whatever we've been seeing, because we're three trailers in, and I'm counting the teaser as one trailer, two, but we're three trailers in, and we haven't actually seen mechanics of this game yet. Like, this game is another game that does not have a real release date behind it, and we don't have any real information of how's the game gonna be played, you know? How, what are you gonna be doing? I know at some point in time we're eventually gonna see it, but it's kinda hard to get excited when you keep just showing me CGI trailers. And yes, again, I get that there may be little sprinkles of gameplay here and there, but ultimately, how does this game work? When I talk to people, am I going to get to pick what I say? I like have different dialogue choices. How does the, you know, good and bad or evil type of thing work in this game? If that is even a feature in this game, how does leveling and customization and all that stuff work in this game? They have once again answered nothing about that. And it's just like more CGI trailers. Now, it does seem like I'm being very harsh on a lot of these games. But realistically, I'm looking at this after the fact, after, like I said, all the newness wore off, and I'm like, okay, what really did we see from this? Unfortunately, that also happened with two other games that I'm looking forward to. Stay the K3, which again was saying, hey, this game exists, <laughs> we're still working on it, and they did something that we was expecting, but not exactly. That's what the last game they dropped, the next Gears game that is coming out. We know that there's another Gears game coming out. It is also a prequel like Doom the Dark Ages, and it's gonna be featuring Marcus Phoenix and Dom, which I really, really like. I remember playing Gears back in the old days on the 360, the first one and playing every single one after that. And they always alluded to, especially in the first game, like stuff that happened in the past and everything. But we never really got to see what that was that happened. So it was really cool that we're actually gonna get this prequel. It's kind of seemed to going back to form. It's going back to that horror vibe. It's And maybe we'll see what happened to Dom's wife. That's gonna be kind of interesting to actually see her get kidnapped. But to actually see what happens um, I'm just really excited for this game. It's probably the biggest game that I'm excited for at the whole event. But like I said, unfortunately, that as well as State of the K3 was a total CGI trailer and it's probably still quite a ways off from actually coming out. Now, there was another game that they showed, Expedition 33, which I personally like because I love, you know, JRPGs or RPGs like this turn-based type thing. I'm still in the turn-based. I know a lot of people like that quick, fast action, but I grew up on turn-based and this game actually looks fun. Um, I actually am going to look more into this and see about picking it up when it comes out. I do want to know and find out more about this game, but all in all, this looks like a fun game and it looks like a must-buy for me. It doesn't look like it's coming into Game Pass, which a lot of these other games I forgot to mention. Almost every game I brought up is going into Game Pass, so you won't have to pay, and that is a big, huge plus for a lot of people. You know, you don't have to really pay for these games. You just pay your subscription, 
and you get all these games and that's the big takeaway you're getting a lot of games with your game pass description the other thing that i found out more so recently is that with call of duty a lot of speculation even i brought up in a previous video is call of duty going to make game pass price go up and it looks like as of right now it's not it looks like when call of duty comes out the price for game pass is going to stay the same so that is a plus for Microsoft. That is a really great thing that Microsoft is doing. So then you had a bunch of other games from like third party studios. You had Assassin's Creed, uh, Shadow, whatever it's called, which I don't know why they have that there. Personally, I'm getting tired of seeing the game. They keep putting this Assassin's Creed game, I swear, at every single event. <laughs> and I have not yet been impressed by anything that they show. Now, maybe it's because I'm just burnt out with Assassin's Creed. It is possible. But in reality, this game does not look fun. It doesn't look that exciting. And the problem is, it feels like it's trying to be more Ghost of Tsushima than Assassin's Creed. Um, They showed other games. They showed Dragon Age, the next Dragon Age coming out. I know there's supposed to be a deep dive at some point. It might have already happened this week. But the next Dragon Age game is coming out. It was mostly just showing classes. It was pretty much just a CGI trailer. But... We don't have, I don't think they gave an exact release date of when that game is coming out, but we do know it is coming and it's still being worked on. It has had so many delays. So the people that are really into Dragon Age, this is a big deal. And then also for people that are into Fallout 76, that's not really a third party studio that is, you know, owned by Microsoft now, but there is a new expansion for that coming out. So if you're really big in Fallout 36, that's cool. I was more hoping that we finally, even if we didn't get cross play, we got cross save, cross progression, something so I can pick it up on one device and play it on it. Like, I don't know why we haven't done that yet, why that game has not been updated to that point. But, you know, if you love Fallout and you've been playing it, that's great. Just for me, I just kind of was hoping we got like cross progression. Also, we got the Metal Gear game, which the timeline's a little confusing, but, but chronologically, it's the first one in the Metal Gear series, which, I guess it's kind of smart they did that one. It's not my favorite one, but it makes sense for people that are maybe new into Metal Gear series, especially for Xbox people that are really million to play it like that. You get to actually play through it from the original game and maybe they'll make more if this game is successful. They'll remake all the other games. They didn't show a release date for this either. There's no release date. It's just like, it's coming out. Now when it does come out, I probably will end up buying it in reality and playing it, but there's like no information. And again, this is a constant theme. They keep dropping all these games and trailers. Even some of them look really good, but you have no time frame of when these games are coming out. And then lastly, the last thing that happened at this event is they unveiled new Xboxes. Now, for those who don't know, don't get too excited. It's not new next gen hardware or anything like that. It is current gen Xbox hardware with some tweaks. So as far as the Xbox Series S goes, it is just an Xbox Series S with one terabyte. So from what I heard, they got rid of the black version of the one terabyte for the S and now it is just white. And that's about it. No other under the hood hardware improvements. They came out with an all white Xbox Series X and it's just, it's all white and it's all digital. So you won't have a CD drive and I'm gonna get to it in a minute, but the pricing for this is really weird. I'm gonna go over the pricing for those, but it's really, really weird. And then on top of that, they came out with this new sparkly galaxy Xbox. It's, it's an Xbox, but it has like green stars or whatever under it, and the bottom is green. Now this one is again, a regular Xbox Series X with a disc drive, and it has about two terabytes of storage. Like I know that they're focusing, Sarah Bond said in the event that they're working on their next Xbox, and I can tell because these systems they know since the digital is all white and now the digital is 449 if i remember correctly 449 american dollars i know i have a lot of people that watch my channel that are from the uk unfortunately i don't know uk math in dollars it's 449 united states dollars now here's the weird thing about this whole process if you go on xbox right now to buy an xbox series x in black it is 449 and has a disk drive I don't understand, unless you are really committed to the color, why you would buy the Xbox in white. It doesn't have any additional storage space, the processor, like nothing's faster, nothing's better. This is a little bit dumber than the thing that PlayStation did. It's just a color swap. You don't have the physical disk drive. Now, in all honesty, I almost never use my disk drive on my Xbox, but the option is still there if I want to, you know, and then you have this new Xbox that's coming out that does have disk drive and it's like it's all the sparkly colors on there. And then you have the controller that comes with that. You can make this controller in design lab. So don't really get the point behind that, but it comes with this black and green controller. 
this Xbox costs six hundred dollars for two terabytes it would be feasible more feasible to just go out and buy the external hard drive than to go buy these systems now unless you just want another xbox then by all means but in reality it would make more sense just to buy the external thing that you plug into the back of your xbox whether you have a s or an x and you have two terabytes of storage versus buying this system so in reality, I didn't understand a lot of stuff about this event. The event, yes, it was a great event. It looked fun to watch. I look at it and go like, he didn't really get a lot of information at this event. So again, for what it was worth, the event was awesome. I enjoyed it. It was a long one. They showed a bunch of great games, a bunch of great gameplay. And the new systems do look cool. Because Microsoft has been dropping the ball so much with Xbox in the past few months, I'm kind of jaded and at the point of like, okay, well, Let's see if this actually gets followed through and this actually happens. If it does, great. If it doesn't, mm, I'm not surprised because literally the past few months and even the past few years, Microsoft has said one thing and done something else or they haven't fully followed through or they couldn't stick the landing. Comment down below, what do you guys think? How do you feel about this? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you disagree? Are you excited? Are you not? Put that all down below. Let me know, I'm very curious. And ultimately, you know, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade. I enjoy the Xbox event. I'm hoping that all these games are coming soon. And one more thing I have to add, keep in mind a lot of these games, like the vast majority of these games that you've seen at this event will be available on PlayStation, you know? So PC of course as well, but a lot of these games are gonna be available on PlayStation. So as far as the Xbox community goes, you can only get so hype. I mean, yeah, you get it in Game Pass. A lot of these games you're gonna get in Game Pass. So you're not gonna have to pay those fees, but you can, PlayStation people can kind of get just as hyped for Xbox now because even though they're not third party, they kind of are to a degree, you know, especially moving forward. And Phil Spencer said, more games are coming, even though a few months ago he said, don't take these four games coming over as a sign that more games are coming. And then now in June, he's like, more games are coming. But anyway, whole another topic for another video. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you all in the next one. See ya.